Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you are having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. I really appreciate it. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Sagittarius. Ooh, the Six of Swords and Justice underneath it. The moon is in reverse. Ah, the Two of Swords, the Two of Cups. So I am recording this video on today, which is the total um, eclipse. I don't know if you guys, if some of you, if you looked at it or you didn't look at it. Um, but what you see here is a six of swords. So you're moving on to peaceful, calm waters, okay? Justice is here. So, and I, you know, it was interesting because I was thinking like, obviously it's like the moon is is crossing the sun. <laughs> like they're, they're crossing. So you have to understand because I, I noticed even in the readings that I've been doing today, there's like um, a lot that is being exposed. That that moment of the sun being right there with the moon, obviously those are two opposing forces that work together, okay? So there is a balancing act of, I keep saying this, dark and light, feminine and masculine. There's a universal balancing that is that is happening to the entire collective. The moon is in the reverse, okay? So I don't know if some of you guys know, and I'm not an astrologer, but if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Saturn is in Pisces and it will be for quite some time. And I've been talking about this and I even realized this before I took my hiatus. If you guys, if you're new to my channel, I just came back <laughs> after being gone for a little over three months. But Saturn being in Pisces, okay, let's talk about it. Pisces, many will say is by far one of the most intuitive signs, um, the most psychic, okay? When you think about Pisces, Pisces, which is also ruled by Neptune, those are all things dreamy, all illusions, the, the matrix, you know, for me, Pisces, people say the moon is Cancer, but Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, but this is all water, Okay, this is water. This is spiritual gifts. It, it's any person who really embraces being multi-talented, multifaceted, multi-gifted. Um, especially, you know, if you have gifts, talents, and abilities that are supernatural. With Saturn being in Pisces, we know that Saturn rules karma. Any person that has been using their light from a place of love is receiving good karma. OK, if you've been in the background using any of your um, powers, we should say, for you to abuse them in any way, you're going to go through karma. It doesn't matter who you are at all. That's the reason why you see, you know, people always say, I'm going to move to L.A. to chase my dreams. Right. You see the fall, the collapse of Hollywood right now because Saturn is in Pisces. All things that are illusions and dreams and fantasies are coming to light. And the things that people do behind the scenes to bring their dreams into fruition, there's a huge light being shed on it, just like that with that eclipse today. Okay? And it is also, it's just like sand meeting water. It, it, it's a portal. The darkness there for a moment, everything is dark. Right? And then there's that light. Or you can say for a moment, everything is light. And then there is darkness. But regardless, in that moment, there's a shift that happens. An extremely powerful shift. And I have readings in the past where I've talked about like a, this dark horse-like energy. Because I remember channeling that song, Dark Horse. It's in one of my playlists. On um, one of my playlists that's on the channel. Um... It's like I have a lot of the readings that's um, going over different karmic situations and energies all compiled in one playlist. But what you have to think about is all of these illusions that have been put in place in your path to make you um, look at this seven of cups. Oh, my gosh. I love what happens. Seven of cups. And then you have here the sun and the lovers. Okay. 
Two of Cups and the Two of Swords. So for some of you, there has for sure been an energy out here that has completely blocked you from partnerships. Okay? You've possibly been holding on to something within yourself. Um, there's internal conflicts that have manifested into external conflicts. There are external conflicts in your life that have um, attached to you and cause you internal conflict, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's the the, the, the alpha, the, the, the beginning, the end, if it's dark, if it's light. The thing is, is that all these things have been working sort of in tandem together and now it's time for it to be balanced, okay? For some of you, and I talked about this recently, there is a huge, huge call for a lot of people to balance their own energy and for some people to go into unions and relationships and partnerships because it is time for there to actually be like the crea the creation of this new world, this new earth, as you want to say. That's, a, that's an entirely new like breed of people with a different mindset, okay? Which means that people have to go into partnerships connections, relationships, friendships, where you're going with people who are part of your soul, your soul family, people, um, like-minded individuals who are coming together to build something that is very just beautiful. It, it, it's, it's to bring in change, right? But if you haven't been able to see the importance of partnership because there's been so much fear and so many illusions and distractions for so long, a lot of people are running away from partnerships. That's why I tell you guys, be very careful of what you listen to, who you listen to, okay? Whether it's readers, it's friends or family, because when it comes to you coming into a place in your life of you having peace, peace is always such a huge threat to people because with peace, you're able to get clarity. There's awareness, you're able to stop self-sabotaging. Some people are so traumatized and have been in so much fear, especially the last several years that, like I said, you are afraid to step into greatness. And sometimes greatness comes from you having certain relationships. And I'm not only referring to um, romantic partnerships. If you notice on this two of, of cups, you see... You know, melanin skin, white skin. Some of you, you have been afraid to deal with people who are not like you. But I feel that there is a need for us to embrace more diversity because diversity brings a different point of view, a different perspective. And it, it, it forces you to come out of limited thinking. There are going to be people who are, are very spiritual and very religious coming together. Okay, there's going to be people who are, you know, who, you know, there's differences with, with sexuality, or whatever. All these different people are coming together, but you have, still have to know, okay, so who or what do you serve? But who you serve has nothing to do or it shouldn't have anything to do with a lot of your own um, personal traits and characteristics that make you different from somebody else. I just feel that there is something happening now that is it's supposed to create more unity. And there's going to be some people who are always going to push, push, push. Um, that we have division amongst people, which is not a thing really of love. And then there's people that are just like, I'm, they're, they're always neutral. They're independent. Some of you definitely are fighting like a real serious battle though when it comes, like I said, to your partnerships where you can't see something here. You've been walking by faith trying to figure out who exactly is going to come in and offer you some type of understanding, some type of love, some type of compassion. And you're going to find that it's going to be the people who have a totally different, come from a totally different walk of life then you're going to find yourself yoked with. So if you are out here and you're being mean, mad, angry, resentful, or whatever, I see people also, I, I'll never date that sign because my heart was broken. I don't like this particular group of people. You don't know where your help is going to come from. And I feel like God is going to force a lot of us to let go of pride and ego because your, your help, your blessing 
is going to come from the same place or in some cases the same person that cursed you. Seven of Cups, the Sun, and the Lovers. Again, choices. Choices and illusions. You're being freed. You're being liberated. The truth is being illuminated here for you to see, again, what path you're supposed to take. There's a major um, emphasis, I feel, on like interracial, intercultural like connections here. Again, people who have totally different backgrounds are coming together because both of you have something that is needed. And to put two people who are totally different together, who can come together to produce something, it brings even more illumination to like situations that will glorify God. It's like, you're going to see people who you never in a million years, you will put them together. But what they're going to produce because of the strength of them together, that's what's really going to give God the glory. Like, wow, I never imagined it. I would have never, ever guessed that, that those two people will come together. But that person's mindset, their lived experiences and your mindset and lived experiences is where the magic actually happens. A lot of people always want to go with who makes them the most comfortable or what they're used to. There is no growth in that. Your soul will not evolve in a comfortable place. Three of Pentacles, again, emphasis on partnerships. Collaboration. Let's see. Something is about to finally be balanced, though, where there's been a lot of confusion. There's a decision being made as well. The moon is in the reverse with the king of pentacles in the reverse. People who have been very hungry, greedy for power, control, money, or whatever, especially if they've been using any type of divination or occult practices to gain wealth or power, this is coming to an end. It's an inevitable end. The death card is in the reverse. There's no way. Oh, wow. <laughs> the death card in the reverse, the chariot in the reverse, seven of swords in the reverse, seven of pentacles in the reverse, five of swords in the reverse, the emperor in the reverse. This, this, um, this abuse of power that has been used for so long here, this is what is collapsing. It's, 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 it's over. It's done. It's a shift. Obviously, this is this, these are changes that you will see happen over time gradually, but these are the times that we're in now. You won't be able to abuse your power to get what you want. I talked about this in a reading that I recorded in um, I think I think I just uploaded it actually. When you go to weigh the heart, right? The heart must be as, as light as a feather. Greed, pride, lust, ego, jealousy, envy, your heart is always heavy. Right? Because people that do things like that, they don't rest. There's no rest for the wicked. They don't have peace. Their heart is heavy. You cannot win with a heavy heart. The heart is going to be the gateway between the earthly realm and the spiritual. People who have been siphoning and harvesting energy and all this other stuff, you know, if you want to think about chakras, First, second, third chakra, and then your fourth chakra being the heart. Then the throat and, and on up, you know, neck, neck up. So if you've been using all these different things to abuse power to get what you want for these earthly things, now you're overwhelmed with your own um, darkness you have a, a heavy heart, meaning you're connect, you're you're cut off from from the divine. Your spiritual channel is shut down. Again, Saturn being in Pisces, 
the downloads that a lot of people have been receiving, they're not going to get them anymore. Queen of Wands and the Six of Wands is popping out with the Empress here. Two of Cups. It's an awakening here. It's an awakening that comes from a lot of self-mastery. Remember, the Emperor is out here in the reverse. So for some of you, you've dealt with somebody that could have Aries, Cancer, Scorpio, Earth in their chart heavily. Doesn't have to. It could be any sign. But that's what I'm getting here. Someone very, very um, money focused and driven for sure. But see, a lot of people, you see this even now with a lot of the celebrity couples and everything. Most of the high rollers, the producers who are masculine men, they never got a seat to certain tables until they got with the feminine. I just feel that a lot of these different occult practices and everything else that have been used for so long to siphon the divine feminine energy is 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 over. This Queen of Wands is here in the reverse. But look at all those candles. All of this different spell work, divination, candle magic, and everything else. People abusing things in order to be seen as a creator, to be seen as someone who is abundant, to have the, the fertile energy of a true divine feminine without them actually going through the fire crossing the burning sands to actually gain the rewards and the recognition for actually going through a spiritual awakening or enlightenment, that's over. You have to do the work. I see people now copycatting. And, and I'm just like, wow. You'd be surprised how you think nobody is watching you and you can say something and all of a sudden a person, they, they change everything about themselves. All this bandwagon jumping, three of cups is coming to an end. You're going to start to really see that a lot of people that you thought were friends, family, lovers, you thought y'all were on the same page, you're not. You're nothing alike. And I feel like these changes are coming like in an, in an instant. Three of swords in the reverse. Here's the King of Cups in the reverse, Judgment in the reverse, heavy, the World card in the reverse, heavy, heavy Scorpio energy. This could be picking up a Scorpio person, or this is just the energy of Scorpio. But all these cards here, including the Death card, is in the reverse. The World card here, something is not finished. The Judgment card is in the reverse. The King of Cups is in the reverse. This is somebody here who... With the three of cups in the verse, three of swords in the verse, I just feel that you have a person, they did not learn a lesson. And this feels very much like a person who is about to repeat a cycle, but it's different. Oh, this is bad. This is not good because somebody is about to literally repeat a cycle. And before, when they were able to use powers, rituals, um, the occult practices, divination or whatever to hide, to, to, to hide and to get out of things without having that connection to the divine because you have such a heavy heart. There's no way to get out of this, meaning that every single ending now is, 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 is sure. It's a sure thing. All these cats with nine lives, they've run out of lives now. The lovers and the two of swords. And for many of you, you have to make a choice. Or you need to understand the importance of you making a choice. There are some connections that will force you to forfeit your own destiny in order to be with someone who does not serve, is not planning to serve the same purpose. Is you. You have people that will come in and pretend that they're on board with you. Friends, family, and lovers. 
only because they want the benefit of having that psychic, that divine, spiritual channel that you have because they're 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 dead from the, from the neck up. This is pretty much like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, there's no more, no more connections. You have here the Hierophant and the Ten of Pentacles. You don't see this coming. Many of you, you've had so many failed partnerships, relationships, collaborations that have gone wrong. Yeah. Stress, the fear, the anxiety of you carrying more weight, more burdens. You don't see that you're actually being par paired with something that is of a higher level of consciousness. That is for sure, it's leading to something very long term, very successful, prosperous, abundant. This is legacy. Now, the source, you do not see this though because of the stress, the fear, and the anxiety that has been around you. But I have a, a surprise for you. The Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups is here. What's behind you? If this is a star, I'm going to fall out. <laughs> and the star. So, your burdens are being dropped. And then here's the King and Queen of Swords. Matching the lovers. For some of you, again, you and another person right now, you're not able to fully operate in the heart space. Because you've had to be practical, logical, and discerning because you had other people trying so hard to rob you of all of your pure light, love, energy, your essence. You're going to find a way back, though, to being creative and being able to operate in this space. You know, it's even like with me, and I know I'm not the only one, there's a lot of people who are in the community of, of healers and light workers, they've just been burned completely out. Just burnt, burnt out. And and when you know that you have a, a major purpose, like myself, I'm like, let me let me take some time out to recharge because the things that are coming, you need all of your energy. And when you do energy work, your energy is always being shared with the collective. You will you will eventually face burnout. But this is the thing. A lot of people will not take a break because they need the ego boost. They want the money. They want the popularity, the fact, they, whatever they want. There's a lot of things now about the spiritual community, especially like here on these different platforms. Nothing about it is sacred anymore. That's why when people argue with me, when I say I'm not going to just whistleblow about everything, I don't care because a lot of people are quote unquote whistleblowing because they want to be heard, not because they actually care about justice. They're telling you what you want to hear, whether they know it or they heard somebody else say it because it, it gets likes, it gets attention. It's a way to keep harvesting energy. Not because they actually care about you receiving justice. The people who have not been abusing the things that they have been given as part of their sacred journey, sacred wisdom, and those are the people now who will actually, you will see, they'll go far. While others who are very foolish, the fool in the reverse, they will suffer. They will They will take a fall. And some people, you know, it's easy to think, oh, you're waiting on something bad to happen. To be stuck, unable to progress, that's bad. <laughs> Sometimes it's like people are looking for a person to really have all this awful stuff to happen. To look up and every three years as these new cycles come in, every three to seven years, and you find yourself here in the same place you were the last time it came back around, like I said, the world in the reverse, you're not completing cycles. That's bad karma in itself because that means that your soul is not actually evolving. You're not ascending. You're doing the same thing over and over. It's a it's a it's a karmic matrix and illusion that a lot of people are stuck in. I don't know if it feels upright or down. You have a nine of cups. 
when I take it, it's upright. Yeah, that makes sense. Two of swords, not enough swords. <laughs> Some of you, you're very stressed out. You may not be sleeping well, but 9-9 nine, nine marks a being very close to an ending. Five of Pentacles. You're exhausted, though. And your intuition is still telling you, hold, hold on. And I, a lot of our light workers and healers, like I said before, they're, they're tapped out. They're exhausted. And if you allow yourself to become so tapped out, especially if you're operating in ego, you cannot team up and collaborate with the right people to create any type of magic that will allow you to take risks they will actually usher in real change. You can't. Eight of Cups. You have to walk away from what no longer serves you in order to get to where you need to go. Where you're really supposed to be. The four of swords and the three of wands. So what's coming in is a period, again, of rest and reflection. And once that comes in, then you step into this king of wands energy or you finally get on the path to meet a king of wands. Someone who is passionate about change, reform. Someone who is a natural born leader. They're charismatic. They're ambitious. They're assertive. They take action. This is the person that, like in this card, they will cross the burning sands. They have the strength. They have the power. The lion, rep the lion represents something very majestic. This is a person who has a, a presence about them that it is majestic. It is it's almighty. It's powerful. And a lot of you, you will meet people like this or you are currently in this energy because of the long journey you've been on. You don't look like, <laughs> you don't look like a powerful person because let's be honest, everything you've had to go through, you're tired. But if you can just keep holding on, you'll be just fine. Queen of Pentacles. Is being practical. The devil in reverse, good. The devil in the reverse and the knight of swords in the reverse. See, the devil is constantly trying to send fear to your mind. Queen of Pentacles, the best thing you can do is remain practical, grounded, stable, secure. Manage what you become a, a, a person who can really, really manage what you have in order to show God, source, the universe, whatever you may believe in that you are ready to manage and govern more. This is a pretty straightforward message. I mean, it's it's a lot of growth, but, you know, if I sit here and told you that, that everybody's going to make the cut, I would be lying to you because they're not. <laughs> and a lot of people feel strongly that, that, that you know, that they're doing the work. They made the cut. This kind of work takes a lot of sacrifices. I've gone four months without income on this channel to recharge. But like I, would, I won't sell my soul <laughs> for tarot or for YouTube. Not doing it. No place like home and co-create. Yeah, you're being called back home. It's time to leave this place where you've been, the karmic illusion, this community, this relationship, that job, that friendship, that family member, whatever it is, co-create. The time for you to co-create is here and now. And this is meant for you to go the distance and actually be happy. Why? Because it's your purpose. And yes, you are being given a leg up. There's a particular deck that I'm looking for. Sorry, give me just a moment, please. This isn't the deck I was looking for, but I'm just gonna get a few final messages and close this out. 
it's straightforward. There's a collective ascension that's happening, but you have to be willing to pass through the darkness. And you have to also be understanding of the fact that just like with the eclipse, with the sun and the moon coming right there in conjunction together, the darkest parts of yourself will be revealed to you, maybe even to other people. Everything that has been done in the dark, there will be some type of light shed on it. And depending on what you've done in the dark has everything to do with what happens what everyone will be able to see. In other words, there's nothing that's hidden. The sun being right there on the moon, there's nothing hidden. Six of Cups. I'm sorry, this is the Six of Cups. It's the Six of Pentacles. I'm sorry. Six of Pentacles, though, is balance. It's equal give and take. It's you reaping what you've sown. It's um, it's also a card of gratitude. Wow. And then it's, oh, this is so good. Two of Cups and the Star. That's why I say, you know, be thankful even for the things that haven't worked out. It was it was preparation. It was practice and preparation. Some of you don't realize that you're the, you're being prepared for leadership for you know these high high levels of commitment, marriage, ministry, all types of things. The star here is the King of Pentacles. The Page of Swords, and then there's the Four of Wands, the Ace of Cups, and the Four of Swords. You're going to have an opportunity very soon to rest. But you have to be grateful for everything. And you'll know the people who, who have nothing to hide because it's easy for them to operate right now with grace and mercy. When you're not afraid of, of anything coming to, to haunt you, you shouldn't be, you know, worried about bad karma. Two of Cups and the Star. It says two hearts dedicated to creating something wonderful. That's what I said before. It's two different people. It's, it's two people here. For some of you, you're going into union. Of course, it's you, you know, going into union with yourself, balancing your light, dark, feminine, masculine, yin, yang, energy, great. For some of you, though, you are going into partnerships. And this partnership that may be coming into your life, it's a dream come true. The partnership that you have with yourself and with Source, it is a dream come true. Because you're going to start finally believing in yourself fully. You're no longer going to be walking around hopeless and, and full of guilt and shame with these this limited thinking. The King of Pentacles is here with the Page of Swords. There's a financial breakthrough here. And it comes as a person gets very truthful and honest with themselves about what it takes for them to be in this energy of the King of Pentacles. You know, the, the truth is, is that if you want to win in life right now, I would suggest that you really understand the importance of respecting the Divine Feminine. Including Divine Feminine. How you honor yourself right now is going to literally dictate and control every situation, relationship, partnership, I'll offer an opportunity in your life. And to all of the people, whether fem male, female, masculine, feminine, who disrespect the divine, the energy of divine feminine, which is an energy that is here 
to cultivate change by nurturing things, you're really going to be in bad shape. Real, real bad. The people who understand the importance of them protecting and nurturing the divine feminine right now are the people who will have so much abundance in life to celebrate. I feel like there's even a person out here, honestly, who is who is coming into this awareness, or it's a collective, especially of masculines, who are realizing that they need to understand how to use their resources. And in order for their resources to, to become fruitful and multiply, they need to actually yoke themselves with the right feminine. But if, it, if you've ever had bad motives or intentions to go towards a feminine, to try to drain them of something or to gain something. <laughs> it's, 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 it's up and stuck. It's really bad. For all the people that have done that. Ace of Cups and the Four of Swords. Love. Union. Partnership. Emotional fulfillment. The emotional fulfillment that comes from being in a community of like-minded people or with friends, family, a lover, or being alone, self-love, that, that's like the highest frequency that's going to make you a vibrational match for things that bring peace. And again, with peace comes more clarity and awareness. Wow. New beginnings. See? Starting a brand new life. Finding your purpose. This is judgment. It's being able to look over the past and have grace, mercy, and compassion. Because any person that you cannot give grace and mercy to if you can't give grace and mercy, grace and mercy will not be extended to you. It doesn't matter how good you are because we've all done something that we're not proud of. I said this recently in a reading and I'm going to say it here because of course people don't watch every reading. When I see people talk a lot about the karmic and this is something that I will share being transparent because I feel that it has had um, made a, a major difference in my spiritual journey. Every single person in my life that I look at as karmic, whether friend, family, lover, I literally have started to, to put myself in their shoes or to as assume that I've done, that maybe I did something to them. At some point, maybe not in this lifetime, but maybe even a, a previous lifetime. Some people have parents, siblings, friends, family, and you're like, this person is such a thorn in my side. Like, I don't understand. It seems like that person hates you. Sometimes a person's soul can remember something that you've done to them. And maybe you haven't become awakened or, a con or conscious enough to know that you've done something to them before. In everybody's story, there's going to be a villain and the victim. And the truth is, is that oftentimes we feel like we are the victim. But the same story that you're saying that you're the victim in, that person is saying that you are the villain. And you don't get to control that. It's just like you are saying that some people in your life, they, they were the villain. See, they feel like they are your victim. When you start to understand that, that you can't control how somebody else thinks about who you are or what you've done, and you understand that the soul is going to remember everything that has been done, it has kept score, and that you're not perfect, you then will start to extend a lot more grace and mercy to people. Because some people in your life right now that's causing you all kinds of drama, mayhem, chaos, conflict, you never know. You could have done that to them in a previous lifetime, and you just don't remember it. And that's the main reason why they're here in this lifetime is to remember, is to teach you. This is who you once were. You were once the narcissist. 
anything in your life that keeps on chasing you down, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a huge possibility that it's something dwelling within the shadows of yourself that you just have not become awakened to yet. People are here to teach you things about yourself. That is the reason why so many people are against partnerships. Partners are your mirrors. Friends, family, lovers, children, they are your mirror. A relationship is going to teach you more about yourself than you could ever learn alone. Because when you're alone, you always tell yourself that you know it all, you, fi you figured it all out, everybody else is karmic, I'm perfect, I'm perfect. Yeah, okay, narcissist. Inflated ego. You're not perfect. You may be good in this lifetime, you're really good in this lifetime because you, you have to pay a lot of karmic debts in a previous lifetime. That's the evolution of the soul. Stop running from other people. The only people that's running from love and other people are people who are still afraid to confront themselves. Nine of Pentacles. It's a lot of wish fulfillment here. This is the second time nine nine has come out together. So there could be something significant about Virgo. Virgo's um Virgo season, nine, nine, nine days, nine weeks, nine months. But it also just, again, the number nine, you, you're, very, you're very, very, very close to the end. And here you have justice. Wow. And your justice is six of wands, the high priestess, the strength card, seven of wands, ten of wands, the sun, and the ace of pentacles. I'm telling you this. This is a huge financial breakthrough. I, I'm, I'm really feeling like in this partnership, this partnership for a lot of people has a lot to do with you coming together with someone. For many of you, this is a business partnership. It could be romantic, of course, but there's a lot of you that are about to go into some life-changing business partnerships, but you're going to have to be willing to work with something or someone that let's be honest, you were prejudiced towards at some point because of certain experiences. Some of you, the people who have mistreated you the most are the ones that are, are going to need your help. Some of you, the people that you have avoided the most, that's going to become your community. The sun and the ace of pentacles. A lot of money. This is promotions. They bring a lot of power, prestige, positivity. Like you becoming an inspiration to others. But you're going to have to allow yourself to be inspired again. This is so like, you know, some of you, your way to your breakthrough is through gratitude and you giving a leg up to somebody else. Sometimes you, 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 you know how people say you have to pay the cost to be the boss. Sometimes you have to put, you're going to have to put something else in. Yeah, a leg up. If you want a leg up, you're going to have to give somebody else a leg up. Mending. And then there's New Life, Treasure Island, and Yang. All that glitters. And remember what I said before, like that King of Wands? You have some people that's going to come into your life. They're golden. They are golden. They'll come to you in rags. I, I keep saying, you better be careful how you treat people. Because you once were a person that showed up in rags to somebody on your spiritual journey. And they gave you a leg up. Either they treated you very well 
and they gave you a leg up or they dogged you out really bad and they still gave you a leg up because you were strong enough to get up. A lesson is a lesson. A win is a win. But you have to learn that to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. Good followers make good leaders. Good leaders make good leaders. And sometimes you're leading and following at the same time. Atlantis Oracle, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to embrace the unknown uh -oh. voice. This is the second time the card has come out. You have voice, forgiveness, and melting masks. With lantern at the bottom of the deck. It says consciousness is light. Being conscious of the power of forgiveness is, is, the, is light. Hurt blocks our light. Not forgiving somebody for hurting you means that you can't forgive yourself for hurting yourself. Or you can't forgive yourself when, when you hurt somebody unknowingly or unconsciously. Do not expect grace and mercy when you don't give it out. I see a lot of people, judgment, judgment, judgment. You wonder why you never get the like real good karma? Because in the back of your mind, you're still hoping that other people have bad karma. Melting mass, it says, allow your spirit self to shine through the many roles you fulfill and voice. Some of you are supposed to be using your voice in some type of way. And with melting mass, this is about transparency. Using your voice and being transparent. Telling people how you've overcome hurt and helping other people, being a, a lantern to people who have broken dreams. By showing, demonstrating that you can have radical self-love for yourself after breaking out of some type of matrix where you had distorted desires. It was a mouthful, but that's, that's what this is. Somebody out here, you have a purpose to help other people take their mask off. But the only way you can do that is if you take your mask off. Lead by spirit. It says here, so some of you, your, your life purpose may involve body work such as massage therapy, energy healing, physical therapy, or exercise training. Okay. Energy healing, Reiki healing, massage, therapy, helping other people. You could be an artist. Some of you are meant to travel a lot. Engaging in art artistic activities is beneficial to your career in every other area of your life. So for some of you, you're, you're, you're artists. Maybe you sing, you play instruments, you paint, whatever. Those are things that you should be focused on. Some of you are meant to be digital nomads. You're meant to travel the world helping people. Healing people through art. Energy healing. Using your hands. Massage therapy, though, or energy healing. This is you... Getting pain out physical therapy, helping people with mobility. 
even on a, in a spiritual sense, helping people to move forward with higher consciousness. People who've rejected their own dreams because they don't believe in themselves because they've been so hurt. If you have a purpose to do things like this, you don't have time to be focused on being mad, sad, and angry. Or being prejudiced towards people. Because of their, their sign, their religion, their background. It's foolish. This shows that there's a misalignment. This card, it, it says a role becomes a mask when it distorts, constricts, or conceals rather than reflects a true expression of our spirit self. A mask typically arises out of the ego's desire to be real and in control when in fact it is neither. The ego, like the body and emotions, are tools. Their function when used appropriately and proportionally is to give authentic form and expression to our spirit self. I want to leave it there because th this is something that I was thinking about earlier. And I'm just going to use the tarot community because that's the community that I'm, I'm here in. It really is funny to me how so many people pride themselves on being so authentic in how they express themselves. And as soon as a person comes along and begins to, to, to criticize them, or, or not even criticize them, but just have criticisms about certain forms of expression because it's not how they express them. That person will then go and change themselves. And what that shows is that a lot of people who are claiming to be leaders, they're followers, and they constantly put on different hats and wear different masks just for them to, to, to stay relevant. That's not operating out of your, like your higher self. That's a lot of energetic shape shifting, a lot of chameleons. People just want to blend in. They just want to be relevant. They just want to be popular. They just want to make money. That's why I always say tarot is not my purpose. <laughs> it's not my purpose. It's a tool, it's a craft, it's a hobby. This is not my purpose. And the moment that I began to idolize tarot in any way, I'm out of here. I won't forfeit my purpose for a tool. I didn't align myself with tarot. Divine channel. Wow. <laughs> you are a divine channel. You work with your angels and guides to deliver messages that assist others on their spiritual path. I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what I've been saying. That's the reason why your heart cannot be heavy. A, heart, a heavy heart blocks a divine channel. Next to the heart chakra, going up is the throat chakra. A person with a cold heart, a blocked heart, a heavy heart, they're going to speak nothing but death and destruction. And if you are a person who has a purpose to heal and to uplift and there is power in your voice and your tongue, but you speak from a broken, cold heart, hmm. All the destruction you can do.